when I die of probably very natural causes, mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure it looks suspicious as f***. And I know you will try to avenge me, even though it was just me the whole time. <laughs> That's exactly how it's going to go down. <laughs> Hey, I'm Blake. And I'm Dave. And this is the Romance Movies from Hell episode of yeah. First Price Films, a sexy podcast where we each select a genre-specific movie and pit them against each other to find out which film was the coveted title of First Prize. What does that mean for us, Dave? Yeah, so it's like telling your cat not to do something. Yeah. It's happening against your will. No matter what you say. <laughs> Truly. Today we are losing our minds with love in these Romance from Hell movies. It's true, Dave. Lots of stuff going on in this. <laughs> yes, we initially called these road movies, but we realized very quickly... These are romances from hell. <laughs> it's, it's true. There's no other way to classify them. Blake, I made you watch True Romance, a movie about a boy and a girl who fall in love and murder people and steal cocaine and love Elvis. Pays to have dreams, Dave. <laughs> And I made you watch 1990's Wild at Heart, a soap opera dreamed up by a horny Satan. <laughs> Big fan. Uh, yeah. Before we get started, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoy the show, a thumbs up might help you fall in love and break parole. Uh, uh, no promises on the fall in love part, but definitely break parole part. Down with the government. <laughs> also, for our audio listeners, give us a follow on whatever podcasting platform you're listening to us right now. Or true. in the future, or Sometime. whatever. Well, who cares? <laughs> so, Dave, have you ever seen these movies? We have True Romance from 1993 and Wild at Heart from 1990. No, no, I have not seen any of these movies. This episode was uh, your idea in terms <laughs> of genres, because I, I, I didn't know anything about road yeah. movies. And then um, you were like, actually, they're Romance from Hell movies. And I went, wait what's happening and then i watched them and i just i really have one question yeah um what did i ever do to you exist oh be in my life having met me at all we reap what we sow dave <laughs> <laughs> no uh. these are movies that are interesting to me because i've seen wild at heart one time probably mm -hmm. 15 years ago i'm a huge david lynch fan if it's, if you yes. don't know but i haven't seen wild at heart in a very long time and i don't really remember it that well uh true romance I feel like I saw it in a dream once. Like, I remember <laughs> little bits and pieces of it, but people yeah. still talk about this thing, and it was notoriously written by Quentin Tarantino, which, yes. duh. <laughs> <laughs> Very clearly. Yeah, so I wanted to explore these again and, and see what the fuss was all about. Yeah, I'm excited to hear um, your thoughts on them because, again, your idea. Um, <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to give my thoughts on both these movies because... yeah. I had a lot. You know this. I've been mm -hmm. dying to make you watch a David Lynch movie for yeah. so long. And yes. this is the only way I think I could really make that happen. Because you dodge me outside of this show a little bit with my, my recommendations. Like, yeah, sounds good. Maybe we'll see it one time or whatever. <laughs> and now I'm like, no, this is your fucking job now. You have to watch this. And yeah. I think this is actually mm -hmm. a pretty interesting intro into the David Lynch verse. I will say, too, that uh, if you had given me this movie... In the first season of this show, I'd have been like, I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> this is this has been timed out uh, over the past couple of years. Like, yeah. when is the right time to drop a movie like this onto Dave and, and make sure he would uh, maybe have some form of appreciation or know where I'm coming from with it? Whether totally. you like it or not, I don't know. Spoiler, didn't work. I That's fine. I know how <laughs> I feel about them, and we're going to get into both of them uh, now, hopefully. Yes, please. Let's get this over with. Rip off yeah. the Band-Aid. Movie one, True Romance, 1993. All right, Dave, give me the synopsis for 1993's True Romance, written by Quentin Tarantino, directed by Tony Scott. Once upon a time in the Midwest, an unassuming comic book nerd falls in love with a call girl. They start their lives together in the most storybook way, murdering a pimp and stealing a million dollars worth of cocaine. <laughs> Watch as they leave a trail of bodies and ruin lives and fuck everywhere. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's pretty right to the point. Got it. <laughs> Elvis, he was pretty the most women, you know? I always said, if I had to fuck a guy, if my life depended on it. So we open up to a Clarence Worley, played by a young Christian Slater, going on and on about Elvis to a call girl and how if he had to fuck a guy, it'd be Elvis, and then decides 
he wants to go to a martial arts triple feature now that he's turned on, I guess. And to this, I was like, is that Blake? The uh, triple feature part, not the fucking Elvis part. I was like, man, this guy's really speak my language here. Can't talk to women, <laughs> likes really obscure movies, and wants to fuck uh, old famous singers. It's true. I knew it was you. I don't know, man. It just <laughs> it resonates with me. Oh, look what happened. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Now, at this triple feature, Clarence gets popcorn dumped on him by a beautiful lady named Alabama with a not beautiful name, played by Patricia Arquette. And yes. after the movie, she asks him to get pie with her, which is not her asking him for sex, pervert. It's not a euphemism. They just really like pie. Uh, you want to see what Spider-Man number one looks like? You bet. So Clarence and Alabama are at the comic book store that he works at, having a grand old time not having sex, like I said, because yeah. he's a comic book nerd. But wait, Alabama is giving him the googly eyes, and I think I'm about to eat my words. Oh. Well, I guess Alabama really likes Spider-Man or something, because what you just heard, if you're audio listener only, is they were fucking. Uh-huh. Normally, Dave, I would scoff at the idea of uh, people falling in love immediately like this. But these are two stupid idiots, and I believe this love wholeheartedly. <laughs> so after the sexy times, Alabama has to come clean to Clarence. She's actually a call girl, and Clarence's boss paid her to sleep with Clarence for his birthday. My boss asked me to work off the clock, so I guess both of us are getting fucked. <laughs> I'm my own boss, and I <sighs> masturbate too much. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel really goofy saying this after only knowing you one night. But I think I love you. Well, hello, Mr. Worley. How do you do, Mr. Worley? Now, I'm a little confused, Blake, because this doesn't seem like Clarence got really bummed about being conned and Alabama went about her business. No. It seems like they got married after one night and then got tattoos of each other's names. Am I losing my mind? <laughs> this is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they're they're not, like, normalizing this behavior. This is crazy behavior. Yeah. But they do, like, give it this sense of romance and stuff. And, like, <laughs> I'm in my 30s just horrified. Who and what is a Drexel? He was my pimp. He got a little bit rough the other day. What do you mean, with you? No, with my friend Arlene. What you do to end up with a son of a bitch like that? Well... Anyway, Ooh. now we get to meet Alabama's pimp Drexel, played by Gary Oldman. This is a bonkers, Jesus. absolutely bonkers role. And then he's also in a scene with Samuel L. fucking Jackson, who yeah. he kills for a suitcase full of coke, which is a sentence I never imagined I'd say in my wildest dreams. Dude, Sam Jackson is in here, and I was like, oh, Sam Jackson. And then like uh, two seconds later, I was like, he's dead now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> All for a suitcase full of Coke, which is even more confusing because I don't know anybody who likes soda that much. You sweet bastard. Are you haunted? Yeah. You want to get unhaunted? Oh, yeah. Well, I'd kill him. So Clarence is hallucinating that he's talking to Elvis, who yeah. he wants to fuck, need I remind you? Yeah. And his hallucination <laughs> convinces him to go kill Drexel. This is a perfectly normal sequence of events. I don't know why you're confused. Yeah, Clarence is a schizophrenic whose inner <laughs> monologue is the ghost of Elvis Presley. But yeah, it's fine. This is fine. But uh, anyway, he gets the address from Alabama, and here we go. And you know what, Blake? Yeah. Let's get some murder music up in here. Oh, I'm ready for it. Bro, I am so confused because it's like something crazy is about to happen. It's like, it's not, I feel like I'm on an island. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> what the fuck? Movies only got away with this kind of score in the 90s. I think yes. this is insane. Oh, it is very insane. But maybe the whole murdering a pimp thing will go a little bit more smoothly than our music did. And what could go wrong? <laughs> Well, aside from getting his ass beat and then leaving his license there in the process, I think it goes pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots Drexel in the fucking dick and then kills him before uh, also shooting his henchman and killing him. And then he finally gets to take off with a suitcase full of Alabama stuff. Thanks, Elvis, or something. <laughs> Dude, Clarence is like 99 cent store John Wick. Like... <laughs> Awful. Yes. Honestly, I'm I'm genuinely worried about how Alabama's gonna take this. Oh, it might go rough for her. I think what you did what? was so romantic. So Clarence gets back and he tells Alabama that she ain't got no more pimp. And she likes it. I'm sorry. 
Can we just p pause just for like a quick second sure. and talk about how both of these people took a left turn so hard I heard my own neck pop? Uh, what could be more romantic than murder, Dave? Whatever. We don't have time to discuss the philosophy of weird love because that suitcase of Alabama stuff is mm. actually a suitcase full of cocaine. <laughs> no, no, wait a minute. Now I'm more confused. It was kind of like... <laughs> Oops, I stole 10 <laughs> pounds of cocaine. My oh, bad. Well. Eddie, uh, I'm, in, I'm in big fucking trouble. Really need your help. Well, now Clarence and Alabama go to see Clarence's ex-cop dad, who he hasn't seen in three years, yeah. to ask for help to turn himself in. Oh, no. No, wait. Sorry. He asked to see if his dad's friends on the force know anything about him at the whole, you know, whole dead pimp's house. Yeah. You just got to use the ones you love, I think is the saying. Sh sure. We got Dennis Hopper here as the dad, by the way. Yes. And not only does Dennis Hopper dad inform Clarence that the cops are not on his ass, mm -hmm. he's proud of him for murdering someone. When your son is Clarence, I guess, you know, I'd be proud if he did anything. Finally. Well, uh... <sighs> I mean, I guess it is the Midwest. <laughs> On out that we're taking off. Kiss pops goodbye. What? Oh, Alabama f just like tongue kisses Clarence's dad. On the mouth, <laughs> and Clarence is like, oh, you silly lady, come on. <laughs> Don't you judge the way she loves Dave. <laughs> Regardless, they're finally leaving town with their coke. Yeah. And you know where they're going, Blake? Where? To Hollywood, to meet up with Clarence's friend Dick, because everyone has a childhood friend in Hollywood, right? My name is Vincent Cocotti. I work as counsel for Mr. Blue Lou Boyle, the man your son stole from. Well... The cops may not have any idea who Clarence is, mm -hmm. but the guy who owns the Coke he took sure does. How, might yeah. you ask? Uh, the license he left behind. Can you pay attention, please? Your son, fuckhead that he is, left his driver's license in a dead guy's hand. After a long, drawn-out, very problematic scene, yeah. Clarence's Dennis Hopper dad gets killed by Christopher Walken playing an Italian goon, and then the Italian goons figure out where Clarence went because of a note on the fridge. Why not? Yeah, because it's that easy. Because Clarence <laughs> and his family are all fucking stupid idiots. Yes. So so stupid. You come for a date? Huh? Ah! I knew it! Was you. Oh, I knew it! Yeah. Well, now Clarence and Alabama show up at Dick's house, uh, where he lives with a stoner named Floyd, played by Brad Pitt, because literally everyone is in this movie. <laughs> Everyone's in this movie, dude. God it's damn it. so true. Anyway, so then they go to their hotel, and mm -hmm. that's where Clarence is like, hey, Dick, you're in Hollywood. You must know someone who wants a suitcase full of coke. And of course, <laughs> Dick is like, no, I don't want anyone like that. That's not how this works. <laughs> yeah, Clarence has the, the fucking balls to just show up and be like, people in Hollywood do cocaine. I'll bring a bunch of coke. <laughs> and that's just how it works. I'll just sell it all, and people give me lots of money. I'm Clarence. Ugh. I have a hole in my fucking head. It's very difficult, you understand? Listen to me. It's difficult because you're selling to a particular group. You understand what I'm talking about? Okay, well, initially, he's like, I don't know anyone, but then very quickly, he's like, There's one guy that I know that could help you out, Clarence, but... I'm not guaranteeing you anything. Well, here's the thing about the guy he knows. Mm -hmm. He's a very big movie producer, and it's also, um, it's, it's, a, it's a I know a guy who knows a guy type situation. Yeah, friend of a friend. Which is funny because I know a guy who knows a guy who heard from another guy that you've been messing around. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> now, about a year and a half ago, this friend of mine got access to the evidence room. And he snagged this coat. Yeah. So he held on to it for about a year and a half until he found a guy he could trust. So... Well, on a roller coaster, because they decided to meet at the only logical place to discuss a drug deal, a theme park, <laughs> Clarence spins this giant web of bullshit. And I'm wondering what comic book he learned to be a savage murderer and pathological liar from. Ant-Man. Oh, okay, cool. Anyway, the guy who knows the guy, Elliot, decides after puking his guts out, fine, I'll set it up. <laughs> okay, uh, Wednesday at the hotel, 3 o'clock, bring the whole fucking cast, all right? All right, so the ball is finally moving. Let's sell Ooh. some drugs. Yeah, boy. This is going <laughs> to go really good. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but first, mm -hmm. one of the Italian goons shows up at Dick's apartment, and roommate Floyd, who is high as shit, yeah. just tells the guy where Clarence and Alabama are. I'm sure... <laughs> This guy just wants to politely ask for the coke back, no? That's how drug dealers are. You are unbelievably cute. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, see, normally <laughs> I'm wrong about these kinds of things, but would you look at that? I was right on the nose about- Look at yourself! Look, I think your boyfriend will go through this shit. Damn, oh, so close. 
very that close. That was so Dave. close. This is James Gandolfini as one mm-hmm. of the goons, you know? Because everyone is in this movie! <laughs> <laughs> I did for a second. I was like, oh, she's going to get away with this for just one second. And then, mm-hmm. nope, she doesn't. He's tossing her around like he's playing shuffleboard on Saturday <laughs> at the local old people home. And it sounds loud, but... Nobody calls the fucking cops. No, this must be a motel or something. Or my apartment building. Anyway, in the middle of telling Alabama how it feels to kill people, yeah. he finds the suitcase of coke underneath the bed. Oh. But you know what? Alabama doesn't go down without a fight. No. Or a, a second fight. It, yeah, there's more fights, but she, she likes yeah. to fight. She also likes to laugh in James Gandolfini's face mm. the way I laugh in the face of high cholesterol before... <laughs> She makes a homemade flamethrower and lights this goon on fire before ultimately shooting him six times with his own shotgun and then embodying the phrase, beating a dead Italian with a stick. That's that's a phrase? And good for her. I support yeah, this. I am fully behind this movement. And now is when Clarence finally shows up. So let's hope that this is the worst of it. This is definitely the worst of it. Hey, you got caught. It's all fun and fucking games till you get caught. But now we got you. Okay, Mr. Elliot fucking actor. Well, that's great. Mm-hmm. Elliot, the guy who knows a guy, yeah. got arrested for driving while getting a coked out blowy. And he gave up everything. <laughs> this scene is hilarious. <laughs> He's trying to like hand her this coke and the cops taking his sweet time. And like, I feel so tense and stuff. And the bag rips open and blows coke all over him he's like a a powdered sugar donut it's hilarious yes and i think the funniest part about that is if he had just not pulled the coke out of out in the open nothing would have happened i know he would have just gotten a speeding ticket just a speeding ticket (laughs) and he freaked out dude that was so fun what amateurs so the two agents who are interrogating elliot set up a sting for the deal with clarence and the movie producer lee yeah so basically now, Clarence and Alabama have to contend with a bunch of violent thugs with guns and the mafia. Oh. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Remember, Elliot, we're going to be right down the hall monitoring you the whole time. Here we go, Blake. I love it's this scene. <laughs> meetup time, dude. <laughs> Clarence, Alabama, and Dick head to the motel where they meet up with Elliot. While at the same time, the mob is loading up their 684,000 guns, <laughs> and the cops are getting Elliot's wire to go, which is taped to his balls? I, dude, I, I know. This is totally like Tarantino's, like, <laughs> tape it to his balls. <laughs> right. Which, like, I don't know. That's how it could be done. I certainly wouldn't know. Me- what the fuck is waiting for us up there, huh? What the fuck's waiting for us? I'm just gonna shoot him. After scaring the metaphorical piss out of Elliot, Clarence is like, all right, I was just checking. That's all. I'll calm down. Yeah, Clarence accosts Elliot in the elevator, and he's like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on there? And he's, like, trying to scare him. And, like, it, it scared me a little bit. I was like, what's <laughs> happening? Clarence doesn't act like this normally. He's never done this. But he's just kind of fucking with it. I don't know. This felt so out of nowhere. And it genuinely made me feel weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was very intense. But... Everything is fine, or almost fine, yeah. because the next set of mobsters find Floyd, yeah. and he once again gives up Clarence in Alabama. <laughs> and I just I, I just need to know now, would you give me up while super high? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Of course I would. I knew that would be your fucking answer. <laughs> Hi. Everybody's here. Elliot. Who's who? We're here. It's drug deal time. Finally. First, we had to get through some pleasantries, some coffee, a little bit of grilling, and some light ass kissing. Mm. All of this while the cops are listening from the other room, thanks to Elliot's crotch wire, (laughs) and the mob are making their way up to this hotel room. It's like watching your cat nudging a full glass of water towards the edge of the table. Nothing is going to stop it. Nothing is going to stop it. <laughs> the cops have no idea. They're listening through Elliot's ball sack, and they have no idea that, like, the mob is also coming, and they're, like, armed mm-hmm. with the teeth. It's like, oh, we're just priming up for a big standoff, dude. I love him. Elliot, I love this kid. Money, get the money. That's it, fellas. Let's get these sons of bitches. So to celebrate the deal, Clarence goes to the bathroom to hallucinate he's talking to Elvis again. <laughs> and then with the precision timing that could only be written into a script... Mm-hmm. The cops burst into the room, and now it's a standoff between the LAPD and Lee's heavily armed machine gun guards. And just when buttholes can't pucker any tighter... Holy shit. Motherfucker. What's going on? 
the mob bursts in the room, and now it's a three-way standoff. There's like 20 guys screaming at each other to put their guns down with no one listening. This is like the ultimate standoff for white trash dickheads. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It really is. And Elliot picks now to ask the cops to, hey, maybe, maybe can I just like, can I just go? Do you think I could just go now? Do you mind if I fuck off in the middle of this standoff? Hi, <laughs> you guys are good here, like all pointing your guns and stuff. Do you mind if I just leave? You have nothing to do with me here, right, anymore? We're good? Right. What a dumbass. Especially because Lee puts this whole thing together that Elliot was against him yeah. and throws coffee in Elliot's face and the bullets start flying because no one wastes coffee, damn it. <laughs> the, the second degree burns hurt around the world. <laughs> <laughs> One by one, people start getting turned into Swiss cheese when Clarence bursts out of the bathroom and gets shot in his damn head. <laughs> like, immediately shot in his head. Somebody call the deli manager. It's, it's getting wild in here. <laughs> Luckily, though, Dick pulls out of the room. Get it? It's a phallus joke. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> At this point, the only people left alive are Alabama and one of the cops. Yeah. No! And by that, I mean just Alabama's left alive. Because <laughs> she fucking shoots the last cop, killing him. Oh, yeah. This is, like, such a perfect ending to this whole thing. She just kind of, like, ducks and weaves her way out of, like, the situation and then just kills one last guy. Like, boom, she's the winner. Yeah. So now she's alone with, like, 35 dead bodies, a suitcase full of cash, and Clarence, who, need I remind you, got shot in the fucking head. <laughs> so, 36 dead bodies? I guess so. The cleaning people walking in, she's like, I can explain. <laughs> I can explain <laughs> everything, please. <laughs> Well, I guess the bullet must have just glanced off of Clarence Elvis enforced skull. <laughs> He's wearing so much hair gel, it just bing bounced right out. <laughs> Cause Clarence stirs and Alabama's like, Oh my god, thank God you're alive. He's alive for some reason. Then Alabama and Clarence make their way through the lobby of the hotel where one of the Italians is holding a random hotel patron hostage <laughs> in front of a dozen cops for some reason. <laughs> Sorry, the reason is that none of the cops will then glance at them as they walk out of the hotel with a suitcase full of money. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Duh. Otherwise, how would they get away? <laughs> Thanks, Quinn Tarantino. So now it's a few years later, and Alabama watches Clarence in an eye patch, mm -hmm. playing with his and Alabama's son, who they named Elvis because, of course, they fucking did. <laughs> God damn it. And they managed to get their $200,000 and make it to Mexico. All it took was a trail of bodies behind them. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. And what are you going to do when that money runs out? Because these people are clearly not that great at anything. But like, it's 1994. $200,000 $200, is equivalent today to like $4.5 million. Oh, yeah. Damn it. They're set for life. Damn it. Their son's going to have to get a job, though. Yeah, fuck him. <laughs> And then we roll credits. This was a wild ride, Dave. Bro, so crazy. Like, literally, I want to show you my reaction to certain parts of the movie. Namely, the Alabama kissing Clarence's Dennis Hopper dad on the mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then for anybody who's just listening audio-wise, tough shit. So this is what I did. Yeah. Yeah, that was my reaction to a lot of the movie in general. I just sat there like... Yeah. What's happening? What? It's Why is this happening? There's just a lot there's a lot going on all the time, but it overall it's like such an interesting film. I see why people love this movie. And I still don't understand how this dorky comic book nerd ends up being a savage like killer drug kingpin dude in a matter of days. Love will turn you into a cold-blooded killer who sells no. drugs on roller coasters. What? It's in the movie. Watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> This seriously was absolutely bonkers. And after I watched this first, yeah. and I was like, fuck, man. What? This movie was fucking insane. And then I watched Wild at Heart. <laughs> insane is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to it. I want to hear it. I want to hear this. Please. Movie 2, Wild at Heart, 1990. All right, Blake. I am still a little bit... Uh, dumbstruck by true romance. So yeah. why don't you clear up my brain with your synopsis yeah. for Wild at Heart. After getting paroled for manslaughter, Sailor and his lover Lula take off to start their new lives as impulsive chain smokers. <laughs> Unbeknownst to them, Lula's unmedicated mother hires a gangster to track down the couple and kill Sailor. Who will survive and how much lung cancer will they have? <laughs> 
Also, a very spot-on description of the events of this movie. Yeah, yeah, they just gave me this yeah. to kill you. And after she said, Lulu was mine, and all the way... Oh, yeah. oh. We waste approximately zero time <laughs> hopping into the murder of this movie, so give me a moment to set it all up. Okay. We meet our two young lovers, Sailor and Lula, cartoons in human skin, played by <laughs> Nicolas Cage and Laura Dern, respectively. Yeah. Turns out, Lula's mom, Marietta, played by Laura Dern's real mom, Diane Ladd. Wait, for real? For, for real. Wow. <laughs> they are actually related in real life. That's crazy. Her mom paid a man to kill Sailor with a knife. Instead of that, Sailor brutally kills him with the power of thrash metal and his bare fucking hands. Oh my god, this scene so quickly into the movie, I was like, oh, all right, well, here we go. <laughs> we literally see this guy's brains. <laughs> like, it's so brutal and violent immediately. And I'm kind of thankful, because otherwise I would not have been prepared for this movie. Hello. Is Lula there? Who is this? Sailor Ripley. There's no way in hell that you're going to talk to her. If you even think about seeing Lula, you're dead. Mama. And you know that you aren't going to see him ever. End of story. Like hell. So Sailor goes to prison for 22 months for exposing that man's brains to parquet flooring. <laughs> and the first thing he does when he gets out, he's got to call Lula because they have a date with Destiny, Dave. Yes, which is fine sure i just am curious as to how he only spent two years in prison for busting a dude's head open it's manslaughter also destiny is the name of the dirty fuck motel on the edge of town <laughs> they need to get to <laughs> hey, peanut baby i got a surprise for you hey my snakeskin jacket did i ever tell you that this here jacket represents a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom oh my god lots of stuff happens now <laughs> so much that just happened lula picks up sailor from prison they make love at the fuck motel <laughs> and then dance like coked up assholes to a speed metal band in a bar Yes. What the fuck? We're going to get back to that. But at the same time, this is going on. Lula's deeply disturbed mother, Marietta, uh -huh. is cooking up a plan with her boyfriend, Johnny, to bring Lula back to her. Like, what? what? Can't you just let your daughter be a daughter and be a human? Absolutely not. Oh, uh, Johnny, by the way, is played by Harry Dean Stanton. Oh, and yeah. so far, I can hardly Dean Stan this. <laughs> Sweetheart, I want you to stop worrying about me and start worrying about how to get Lula away from that murderer. Like I said before, I do yeah. want to touch on that bar scene, though, really Can quick. We? Because, yes, in the perfectly most bizarre Lynchian way, we have Sailor and Lula dancing to metal, mm -hmm. Sailor beating up a guy for flirting with Lula, and then out of nowhere, he starts singing to her the Elvis song, Love Me, while the metal band plays along. Wait, it's not even that they play along. They're <laughs> like, <laughs> here, man. He grabs the mic. <laughs> what? What? It is so good. This movie, obviously, if, if you don't know so far, lives in its own like reality. This isn't like a literal film, yeah. obviously. Like the story isn't literal, but uh oh boy, this scene is so great. I love it. Bro, I was so, I was incensed. Like, hey, we're a speed metal band, but we're gonna also <laughs> play like crooning 50s songs. Yes. You, you of do course. It. I don't want to do this anymore. I love that scene. <laughs> Here's the highlights. We got some dancing to do. Look like a clown in that stupid jacket. For me, it's a symbol of my individuality and my belief in personal freedom. Asshole. To read me like a fool. All those clips, by the way, you just heard happen within two minutes of each other. I'm just so confused. <laughs> Anyway, after Lula tells Sailor the romantic story of her dad lighting himself on fire with kerosene, <laughs> these two lovebirds decide to take this show on the road for real. They're going to run away, break parole, smoke cigarettes, and maybe buy some fireworks and gamble or something. I don't know. <laughs> Dave, uh, all bets are off here. Well, I guess you broke parole now. Baby, my parole was broke 200 miles back when we burned Portagee County. And all this sounds like a blast, right, so far? Mm -hmm. It's a blast. It's a blast, Dave. But Lula's <laughs> mom, Marietta, isn't happy that Johnny, her boyfriend, hasn't been able to find Sailor and Lula yet. She drinks a gallon of gin and smokes a carton of cigarettes, I assume, and yes. decides to hire some additional outside help. Uh -oh. A heavy-hitting gangster named Santos. You want me to shoot Sailor in the brains? With a gun. Yes. In the forehead? Yes. Wrong. 
It's always better to blow a hole through the back of the head, right through to the bridge of the nose. I don't like your condescending tone, Santos, but alas, we must carry on, Dave. These are matters of the flesh. Also, uh, I don't think you're supposed to say the exact thing. Uh, isn't it always supposed to be implied? Nope. Why do you know that? You have to be very explicit about what you want <laughs> when Why do you know hiring, that? theoretically, hypothetically, <laughs> hiring a hitman. I'm just saying. Mm hmm. Words are important. I'm on to you. We keep the weapon and so baby. We're in Jimmy Swagger Cutter now. <laughs> Blissfully unaware of the people after them, Sailor and Lula arrive in New Orleans where they fornicate and I guess <laughs> absorb the vibes of the city. They don't really sure. do anything here. I mean, they do each other. Either way, Johnny arrives in New Orleans too, and he's unceremoniously killed by Santos because I guess Santos is in the killing mood. <laughs> Why not? Now, Sailor and Lula are on the road again, heading towards the state that welcomes everybody, Texas. Like everybody who's white. That's true. That welcome <laughs> comes in the form of a terrible car accident they pass by. I mean, what on earth is this car accident scene? Sorry, I mean, what on earth is the point of this car accident scene? Let's get into it, because Sailor and Lula hop out to help the woman who survived. Oh, God, Sailor. One bad car accident. What are we going to do? I don't know, honey, but we gotta help that girl. You better come with us, honey. Get my lipstick on. It's in my purse. She died right in front of us, sailor. Why'd she have to go and do that, sailor? Well, that was tragic. The woman that they find from this car accident dies in front of them, and Sailor and Lula take this as a bad omen, which, duh. So they <laughs> hop in the car, and they leave the mangled bodies on the side of the road. Yes. The whole time this is happening, I, I get that it's supposed to be, like, sad. I don't know about sad, but... See, I didn't get it. I was lying to you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this movie's on drugs and I'm not, so I'm very confused. It's just like a sign of bad shit to come. You know, it's a turning point, Dave. It's a visual turning point. <sighs> okay. But forget about that, Dave, because mm -hmm. Sailor Lula, they have bigger fish to fry, a Texas town called Big Tuna. Oh, uh, sure. It's a big fish. Gotta fry it. <laughs> this is a place where I'm pretty sure food poisoning could be airborne. <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> Do you say everything's sicker in Texas? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Sick! <laughs> so Sailor chats with an old acquaintance named Perdita to ask if Santos is out to get them. What's her name? Perdita. Oh, I called her Pit Stop Lady. <laughs> 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 Pits for short. <laughs> so, what do you want, Mr. Snakeskin? I was hoping you could tell me if there's a contract out on me. I really need to know. By who? Santos. I heard of nothing. Thanks. What we learn is that Perdita lies about the contract, but also that Lula's deeply unstable mother, Marietta, hired <laughs> Santos to kill her husband all those years ago. <gasps> he was the one who poured the kerosene and turned Lula's dad into a flaming rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Awful, dude. Oh. Just awful. This thing goes way back. I think I'm just more concerned how they haven't put that together yet. Well, how could they? I mean, Lula's like, man, my, my daddy self-immolated. <laughs> and like, <laughs> what other ideas would I have to like uh, go against that, I guess? I don't know. I wouldn't question it. Well, no, but I mean, I would just go straight to murder. I watch too much true crime. That's, you know, that's fair, Dave. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to be eliminated. <laughs> Cut to the clip. I think all this driving's upsetting me, baby. You think we could stay and rest here a couple of days? Anyway, Lula has been feeling a little ill and barfing on the rug like my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, sorry. <laughs> like my Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so these lovers decide to stay in Big Tuna for a few days at a rundown motel to kind of get their bearings, right? Mm -hmm. Here they made a career criminal with the worst case of fucked up mouth syndrome I've seen in a long time. A man named Bobby Peru played disgustingly by Willem Dafoe. Yes. Also, fucked up mouth syndrome is fums. <laughs> Fums. He's got you fums. Know, got a got a heavy case of the fums. Which is funny because he's got a lot it's because he's got a lot of gums. <laughs> <laughs> this here is the man himself. Bobby is a sailor and Lou, two most recent strandees. The economic variety. Bobby's got a way. Can't shake that institution over. Lula starts feeling sick again, looking at Bobby will do that to you, so she goes inside <laughs> and drops a bomb that totally vaporizes Sailor's snakeskin boner. Oh, wait. <laughs> what the heck? What? I'm gonna write it down, because I can't say it. You can't say it? 
It's okay by me, Peanut. While scarfing down a cigarette, Lula reveals that she's pregnant. Huh? In writing. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's even worse, Dave. It's it the was worst the 90s. Way. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Sailor then lights up two cigarettes and smokes them at the same time. Jesus. Uh, he says the baby thing is, is totally cool, but neither one of them look like they're in the celebrating mood. Yes because it's not celebratory no you can't have a baby in a motel room <laughs> well you can it'll just grow up to be the governor of florida <laughs> <laughs> but to add to all this uncertainty mm-hmm. sailor and lula aren't what we would call financially stable so no. they gotta get their hands on some funds asap <laughs> sailor has a beer with bobby and he lays out a pretty great plan i don't know if he does it's great feed store keeps up to 5k in their safe Need me a good boy for backup, even split. These two employees, I take them in the back to open the safe, and you just keep the door covered. You in or out on this deal? I ain't fucking sure, Bobby. Don't take too long to think about it. Basically, they're going to rob a feed store that keeps $5,000 of cash on hand and split the take. If this ain't real Texas, I don't know what is, Dave. (laughs) We got feed stores, guns, small amounts of cash, poor dental hygiene. It's scumbag paradise. (laughs) It is very much a scumbag paradise. And I gotta be honest, I was kind of bummed that Sailor agreed to break more laws. Yeah, you know, he seems like a pretty stand-up guy, but sometimes push comes to shove, and you just gotta do what you need to do for your unborn child and your lover. Fine. He agrees to it, Dave. <laughs> Sailor finally agrees to the plan, and it goes exactly how we all expect it to. Uh, great? Very great. Let's go! Say cheese. Cool it, man! You're next, fucker. After getting the money, Bobby shoots the workers and then turns the gun on Sailor. Sailor tries to shoot him with his gun, but it's a dummy gun. It's a dummy gun. It's a blink gun. Doesn't work. It's a gun for me. (laughs) (laughs) Turns out Bobby was hired by Santos to kill Sailor. It was a ruse the whole time. Uh, Kind of. Bobby gets $5,000. It's a ruse. (laughs) But Sailor is chased outside by Bobby, where a cop pulls his gun. And then this fucking scene happens. Uh Uh-oh. Stop, you sons of bitches! This is the police! Hold it or I'll shoot! The cop shoots Bobby, but before he can finish him off, Bobby does the right thing here and blows his own head off. What is happening? I I have to be honest, though, at this point, I'm just so happy that I can still feel shock. Yeah, and at the very least, Bobby doesn't have to worry about a dentist anymore. Doing himself a favor. Sailor has to surrender to the cop, and he's back behind bars. Meanwhile, Marietta and Santos pick up Lula, and they leave Sailor in Texas. And I guess we're just wrapping this bitch up. Finally. God damn it. Dearest Sailor, darling, the first thing you'll want to know is I'm keeping the baby. Mama wasn't for it in the beginning, but I think she's looking forward to it. I'm going to name it Pace. It's kind of hard to believe that Pace will be six years old when you get out. I love you, Sailor. Um, Blake. Yep. I really need you to explain something to me right now. Sure. How is it? That yeah. Sailor only has to spend six years in prison for attempted robbery, mm. accessory to attempted murder, yeah. and violating his parole that he was on for manslaughter. Well, uh, it's Texas, Dave. I don't know what else to tell oh. you. Nothing makes sense there. <laughs> but we cut to roughly six years later where Lula openly defies her mother and picks Sailor up from prison with their son, Pace, in tow. And wow, is all I can say. This is fucking awkward. It's so awkward. I don't understand why uh, it feels so weird and why all of a sudden Lula is like, maybe I shouldn't be with this guy. (laughs) I get it. Let me explain. Lula. Sailor. You must be my son. Shake hands with your daddy, Pace. Sometimes, Dave, when you have a lot of time to think, you start Mm -hmm. reflecting on the important things in life. Mm -hmm. Like, what do I want for my future? What do I want for my family? Am I a total piece of shit? There's a (laughs) lot of things to consider. So, you know, Sailor does that consideration. And this is what happens. Uh Uh-oh. It's a mistake, honey. You two go on. I'll walk back to the depot. What are you talking about? That's your son in there. He ain't never known me, Lula. So there's not much for him to forget. How can you say this, Sailor? 
It's what makes sense is all. So basically, Sailor thinks Lula and Pace's lives will be better without him in it. Totally agree. And he decides <laughs> to move on with his life without them. He then immediately gets jumped by a gang in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> what? In the middle of a street with nobody around? I don't know where the hell Lula went. She's just vanished. He fucking antagonizes them with a little light homophobia. Yeah. And... And then we're in the Wizard of Oz all of a sudden. This is this is great. We're getting into it right now. What do you f want? <laughs> Like you said, Dave, after calling the game members a homophobic slur, they beat the living shit out of Sailor. Ugh. When he's unconscious, he gets a vision in the form of Glinda the Good Witch from The Wizard <laughs> of Oz, who tells him this bit of sage advice. Sailor Ripley, Luna loves you. But I'm a robber and a manslaughterer, and I haven't had any parental guidance. She's forgiven you all these things. You love her. Don't be afraid, Sailor. But... I'm wild at heart. If you're truly wild at heart, you'll fight for your dreams. Don't turn away from love, Sailor. Basically, the floating bubble witch tells Sailor to quit being a baby bag bitch and fight for what he loves. He wakes up, apologizes to the gang for calling them a slur, and runs away. Lola! That gang has to be so confused. Can you imagine you're in a gang, you just beat up a guy, he is passed out for a couple of seconds, he wakes up, apologizes, and takes off yelling some girl's name? <laughs> it's so perfectly hilarious and absurd. <laughs> I love this. I would be so confused. But you know where Sailor runs to? Lula? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, okay, but, great. <laughs> but... but he does it in a very unique way because she's stuck in traffic with pace. So Sailor is jumping over cars. He's running on top of cars in traffic. And he finally makes it to Lula's car where he professes his love for her in the most Sailor slash David Lynch way ever. Wait, what, 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 what do you mean? Roll the clip. <laughs> Sailor. Love me tender. Sailor. <laughs> and roll credits. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> love. Take me. That was wild at heart. It was certainly wild. I literally couldn't even touch on all the weird and depraved shit that happened in this movie. No. Like the barking people, uh, the high pitched voice man, Marietta <laughs> smearing lipstick all over her face. This list goes on, dude. There's dude, just not time for it. The high pitched voice man, I literally was like, did Blake slip me something? These are all like little David Lynch calling cards, right? Just like Ugh. the weirdness, the absurdity, the music, everything. If you're into David Lynch or just want to see something wholly weird, romantic, and original, <laughs> watch Wild at Heart. I guarantee you've never seen anything like this, for better or worse. Right. I agree a thousand percent, but I will say if you value your sanity, don't watch this movie. <laughs> Even if you just want to kill some time and want to blow your fucking mind a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, watch this movie. You, you might hate it. Most people will probably hate this movie, yeah. and I don't blame them. No, I don't hate it. I just, it's just so, I literally felt like I was high watching this movie. It's like coffee or, or beer uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's definitely an acquired taste. But uh, once you kind of get into the nuts and bolts, you may like it. But again, you may fucking hate it. And that's <laughs> fine too. Listen, I can't talk too much shit. I, you know, speaking of acquired tastes, I am a man of metal. That's music, true. So... I know about acquired tastes. You've had to overcome adversity in your life too, Dave. I have. I get it. <laughs> and uh, by overcoming adversity, we're both going to have to do that in the Thunderdome. Oh, God. Let's do it. Movie versus movie. Welcome to the Thunderdome. The Thunderdome. This place fucking rules. We're back in the Thunderdome, and Yay. I'm actually feeling romantically well-adjusted for once. Uh, what? I lied. But before <laughs> we watch these movies, Dave, you and I decide on five things that we both agree make a good genre movie. Yes. In this case, romance movies from hell. Oh, my God. Let's go through them. All right. Number one, we need volatile lovers. AKA crazy people. Number two, we need terrorizing antagonists. Crazy bad guys, too. Number three, we need an action-packed plot. Crazy shit is happening. Number four, we need an insane romance. Crazy levels of love. And number five, we need a storybook ending from hell. Is this a happy ending? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Starting us off with volatile lovers. Yes. In true romance, Clarence and Alabama are so volatile, it makes my head spin. Yeah. They both start out as sweet, unassuming characters, a comic book nerd and a call girl. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, they become murderers and thieves and are trying to sell drugs and are hardcore badasses, <laughs> beating people to death and surviving gunshots to the head. They're so <laughs> volatile, I'm still not sure they're the same characters from the start of the movie. These two made my ticks come back. Because uh, like everything they did was stupid and wrong. And oh, like just like the wrong move ah oh, they're all over the place they're they just are. living on pure adrenaline not even the cocaine they got for free <laughs> but in wild at heart we're dealing with a special sect of volatile lovers the scary metal murdering pregnant kind sailor's definitely a man who lives by his own rules looking at you snakeskin jacket and <laughs> lula is a traumatized woman who's had to deal with her unstable horny and murderous mother yeah. when these two forces collide dave it's like putting everything you have in the fridge in a blender and praying to <laughs> god you can choke down its contents for dinner oh my god these characters in this movie are so bonkers yeah that it really rattled me and you know what else is rattling? Hmm. The antagonists in both of these movies, yeah. the terrorizing antagonists. As previously mentioned, the antagonists in Wild at Heart are Lula's mother, Marietta, and her hired gun lover, Santos. They uh. ultimately don't really accomplish their job of tracking down the lovers <laughs> and killing Sailor, but no. in their wake, they kill Johnny, hire a ton of weirdos who threaten to assault <laughs> Lula, and then put us, the audience, through mm -hmm. the gamut of bizarre, like, backroom characters with wigs and, like, braces and coins and sex workers it's like it's like an emotional terrorist attack and it took me a while to fall asleep after i watched this for yes real. and i i have to be honest with you i don't think that the antagonists while terrorizing were terrorizing antagonists because our protagonists had no idea this was happening so they weren't being terrorized by it they understand something's going on with them sailor's been asking if there's a contract out for him they know something's going on that's why they got to keep moving yeah but see it's still to me like knowing that there's something on the other side of that door but not knowing that it's a room full of spiders that are on fire with a clown <laughs> I mean, fair. Is it more terrifying to know what's coming after you or more terrifying to not know what's coming after you, knowing who her mother is? In this situation, it's definitely more terrifying to know, because if you don't know, you're just like, well, they're coming. But if you don't, if you see the people in this movie that are coming after you, that's way more terrifying. I understand, but I think I disagree because all these people are weird and any one of them could be a hired killer. And one of them turns out to be. Yes, but Sailor and Lula have no idea who these people are. That's what makes it scary. It could be anybody. But that's the thing is, they don't see the terrorizing shit that we see. It's not the same as in True Romance, where you actually have two sets of terrorizing antagonists that are heroes know about and see coming as they're running from them we have the drug dealing italian mm. mafia yeah. who like to laugh while torturing and killing people and yeah. you have the undercover cops who they do find out during the drug deal they terrorize elliot into into wearing a wire and then they just start a fucking shootout in a hotel room with the italian mafia it's the same time Mafia, whose member shot and killed Clarence's dad, beat the hell out of Alabama, and just asked Floyd nicely where everyone was. So, <laughs> yeah, subtle silver linings to the Italians, I guess. <laughs> I think I think they're both very terrorizing antagonists. They're just a different flavor, you know? Yes, that's very true, which actually helps us get into our next point, action-packed plot. And now, I've already mentioned so much of the action-packed plot up to this point, and I'm not even done, okay? <laughs> Clarence puts a gun to Elliot's head in the elevator. He yeah. shoots Drexel the pimp in the dick and kills his goon, too. There's a problematic torture scene with Christopher Walken and yeah. Dennis Hopper. And then the aforementioned shootout, Alabama versus the Italian goon James Gandolfini yeah. fight scene with flamethrowers and corkscrew stabbings. The list goes <laughs> on and on with this movie. It's nonstop action-packed plot. Dude, the action in True Romance is great oh my god you know wild at heart is absolutely action-packed but kind of like we said before at the last point in a different way than true romance yes on drugs we have murder fornication fighting <laughs> singing breaking parole more murder car accidents smoking robbery shootouts gang fights and all that wizard of oz <laughs> stuff there's so much going on this movie it felt ridiculously compelling the whole way through i felt like sucked into this whole thing because you're just kind of dodging and weaving and all this stuff with the plot and it legitimately is like watching a 10 car pileup. Yeah, I do agree that it is watching a 10 car pileup, but like a really slow one. It's kind of like a 
10 car pileup mm-hmm. and it keeps going but then fog rolls in and then fucking aliens land you know it's <laughs> it's just it's you so never true. know what's gonna happen it's so crazy and speaking of crazy i think mm-hmm. we can really get into the heart of these films number four the insane romance if you want romance of the institutional variety <laughs> wild at heart is the movie for you. Sailor and Lula are inextricably linked together through their love of Elvis, speed metal, cigarettes, dancing, and what I assume is undiagnosed mental illness. <laughs> Nothing can keep them apart, Dave. In order to keep it that way, they break Sailor's parole and bone their way across the United States to start a new life together, even though they have no money and apparently no condoms. <laughs> Which... Uh, kind of correlates it makes sense in context you know i think their their romance is just one for the books although i have to say that in my opinion the way that clarence and alabama love each other in true romance can be said to be a true romance i mean not by me (laughs) i contend they're out of their fucking minds (laughs) but i mean honestly they meet Fuck, fall in love, and get married in what, like a couple of days tops? Yeah. And then Alabama finds it romantic when Clarence kills a guy for her, and then they have sex all over the country while also writing cute notes and breaking the law for each other. And (laughs) I mean, that's fucking insane, but I'm kind of rooting for him. I am not, uh, actually. (laughs) But I I understand why people, like, uh, glommed onto this. This is what, like, teenagers imagine, like, being in love is, is, like... Yeah... And it it definitely is not how love should be. <laughs> oh, I mean, gosh. maybe maybe in the end, kind of. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Both of these have a storybook ending from hell. I love, capital L-O-V, love the ending of Wild at Heart. Obviously, it's weird, but it feels... <laughs> It feels emotionally very mature. Like, Sailor realizes he's not the man he should be for Lula and his son, so he removes himself from the equation, only to get the fuck kicked out of him by (laughs) Random Gang LLC. And, like, through his vision of Glinda the Good Witch, he realizes that it's not mature to walk away from things you love. It's mature to adapt to meet the needs of the ones you love. God damn! This is some good stuff, and even has a big Elvis musical number at the end. It's Uh. so weird there's uh there's a witch and the gang and the stuff and the cars and the things and a big musical number it's perfect <laughs> for like five minutes we'll see what happens i don't know the movie yet. <laughs> we can't judge the movie based on things that didn't happen in it fine whatever but in true romance i think clarence and alabama have a textbook storybook ending they wind up in a mexican paradise with a son and then you remember everything that led to that moment and that's where the from hell comes from yes like clarence has one eye from being shot in the head during a shootout where no less than 20 people got killed yeah. they both have killed someone yeah. they stole a million dollars worth of cocaine and then sold it amidst a shootout <laughs> but hey they live happily ever after somehow it's true they got their 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 big ending on the beach i get it i think it makes sense but the ending of wild at heart was just so like perfectly of its own film like the true romance ending felt like something kind of different and this one felt so perfectly in tune i don't think so at all i think uh, the ending of true romance is the perfect ending for its movie i think it's the generic ending i mean it's literally what they're working towards the entire movie and they get to have it which is a storybook ending i don't think it's That's a generic point. at all you know i think it's generic in the way that the couples kiss and now they're on the beach living happily ever after mm-hmm. whereas wild at heart they still have to deal with all this shit but they're doing it together well I guess you can call this the storybook ending from hell to our Thunderdome segment. So that is true. I'm very nervous. I want to get to this um, finish line, mm-hmm. and hopefully it's not the finish line of our friendship. <laughs> Don't hold your breath. <laughs> hey, look. We did it. It's the finish line. We're at the finish line. Can I go home yet? Uh, all right. All right, Dave. We've made it to the finish line. Ugh. I have to know, what movie do you choose for first prize film? True Romance 1993 <laughs> or Wild at Heart 1990? I gotta be honest with you. When I watched True Romance for the first time, I was like, this movie sucks. Mm-hmm. Like, everything is just so convenient. <laughs> it, everything happens so perfectly, and it's so 
cheesy and and then i watched wild at heart i recognized it being a masterpiece i thought so no i did not recognize it as a masterpiece <laughs> i recognized it as making me feel like i was on fucking drugs and uh there was so much sex and i i i, I was not ready to see laura dern that way <laughs> and it's just it, it, i was I, I don't know if i can handle that because laura dern's like a mom figure and i just can't do this breathe, i did not breathe. remember to breathe <sighs> okay okay i understand <sighs> okay you're better it was just <laughs> so it was just so bonkers and mm. i just it's not the kind of bonkers i can get on board with I, it mm. was just so weird and I'm, I'm very appreciative that i saw it but mm. i i just i don't think it was a it was the better of the two i have to go with true romance for first prize films for romance from hell movies fair enough dude i think these are two films that definitely hit all the marks on our, our points mm -hmm. and everything like that they're both wild they're yeah. both weird in their own mm -hmm. very specific ways yeah. uh there's definitely a vision behind both of them whether you mm -hmm. like it or hate it right true romance while having a lot of wild and funny and weird and crazy things going on also part of me feels like it, it came from the mind of like a 16 year old kid who <laughs> thinks they know how the world works you know to, to a degree yeah. and mm -hmm. it might have been really really cool at the time but in a modern context i don't really think it gelled for me fully Overall, not as memorable for me as Wild at Heart. Not mo emotionally or, like, mentally, right? Wild at Heart is hilarious, sad, scary, violent, melodramatic, romantic, and even sweet at times. And for me, that's just like falling in love, right? This film operates on, like, an ethereal, unreal level that I think cuts directly to, like, the emotional core of what the story's trying to say. Both, like, the highest peaks of this stuff and the lowest trenches of horror. <laughs> yeah. It's not trying to be literal, and that's why I think it succeeds so well. It, like, made me feel so many things, and that got it for me. So, for me, my choice for first prize film is Wild at Heart. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen. As yeah. soon as I finished both, I was like, yeah, we're going to have a fucking as soon As soon as I finished both, too, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. This is the captain. Red alert. Red alert. Welcome to the tiebreaker. Here's the thing. Yeah. We both feel very strongly about our movies, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody who's seen both of these movies recently enough to give a judgment. Do you? Uh, no, definitely not. I didn't think so. No. So I prepared an alternative plan for this. Oh, no. We're going to spin the wheel. What? I, I, I found a wheel thing on the <laughs> internet. And we're going to oh, spin crap. it. May the gods choose uh, whichever movie uh, is the winner tonight. Su super. This is... Not at all uncomfortable. I'm nervous, actually. <laughs> I'm so nervous, too, actually. <laughs> so we're going to spin this wheel, and, um, you know, I guess we're just going to see what happens. Also, because I hate us both, I put a uh, spin again tile in there. So it's wild at heart. Oh, great. True romance or, or spin again. Super. This can go on forever. Here we go. Spinning the wheel. Oh, I'm so nervous. Oh, jeez, I peed a I'm little. scared. Actually, just like a little bit, though. <laughs> Spin again! <Fuck! laughs> Spin again! You know what? Let's hide this choice. Uh, Here fuck. we go, Dave. 50-50, baby. Fuck. Oh! Yay! True romance gets it. I won! It. I mean, true romance won. <laughs> Dave takes this very personally. What? No, I don't. So by order of the internet... And the yes. wheel spinner website I found, <laughs> True Romance, wins Yay. the episode. Uh, let us know in the comments what you choose. I feel like I care about these movies. I would like to know what people think. I would like to know just because I want... Uh, it's, like, really crazy. This movie... Both these movies are really crazy. Yeah. And listen, if you haven't seen these movies, go watch them. Come back to this video. I fully Comment. Agree. These movies are a trip, and I feel, like, kind of changed a bit after seeing them. So... For me, I literally felt like I was stuck on drugs. Well, we're going to watch some more David Lynch movies. <laughs> and now that you've had a taste for it, you might enjoy some other ones. More well-received films better. All right, we're watching Lost Highway next, Dave. Woo! <laughs> 
Hey, First Prize listeners, thanks for tuning in this week. Thanks for having an unhealthy relationship with us. If you enjoyed this episode, if you enjoyed hearing us question, if we even know what love is, consider subscribing to our socials. It's at First Prize Pod on all platforms, and that includes Facebook, Twitter, Threads, Instagram. We're on TikTok and YouTube as well. Also, don't forget to check out our website. It's firstprizefilms.com. Yep, we do this for free because Dave and I are in love and running from the mob. (laughs) But if you'd still like to support us, consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and if you like what you hear, subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. And join us next week for our season four finale as we become cartoon royalty with these Disney princess movies. Yeah, we're watching Moana (laughs) from 2016 versus Frozen from 2013. It's definitely a a big change from last week. I feel beautiful. (laughs) I don't. See ya. Bye ya. It's true, Dave, and I made you watch 1990's Wild at Heart, an alternate universe Wizard of Oz, but everybody's a r- <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> that was just for you. Don't put that in the episode. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs>